Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to view the results uh, within Del3 model. So once we have the simulation, we can easily now view the results and we can extract the results from that uh, graphic user interface as well. And then we can analyze the results. So uh, we already have the simulation, right? The model we set up yesterday. And then and now we can uh, view what we have. So just uh, let me uh, share my screen and show you how to extract the results as well. So here is the window where we have the simulation, right? So once the simulation is done, then you can see this type of a window where it is showing uh, basically the model with uh, bathymetry, but you, can, you can't even see the simulation results. So let me just introduce how to uh, view that one. So that's the graphic user interface, and if you click on the map, you will have the map view, right? And you can see here it is showing the uh, scale in terms of kilometer and then in the output. So if you have any uh, error in the model while running the model, maybe you will face some error and you can see everything there, right? It, it, it will be here, diagnostic.dia file and then dimr run log. So that is showing what it, it is, uh, yeah, what it is doing. And then if you just open this one or double click, so that, that is the diagnostic file. If there is no error, it is going to show you nothing, right, other than that processing. Every processes it is doing, every time and step, it is showing everything here. The time and step, and it recorded everything, literally everything. That's why this model is very now user friendly. It, it usually now displays everything, every message possible. So that is the diagnostic file. If you want to investigate what is going on and if you can't even investigate the actual error so it will show you the message right and you can read that message and you can search for help anywhere and then let me just open that dim or log file it is just showing the time and stay and other calculation it is basically the same one nothing else so there is no problem and it's showing how the second total number of seconds took for the simulation. Okay, so I'm closing that one, and then if you just uh, click on the right side map, and then you can see the output. If you just uh, check off this one, a bit level, here it is, and then it will be done, and then output map, and we have output history file as well. So you can see while running this model, I didn't even show you how to uh, just. Uh, display that or how, how to put this observation, this I, you can see. These are the observation point and you can select or you can put any point from this one. If you click here and if you put anywhere based on your location, it will be here and then if you run the model, then it will extract the time series for this one. So that's why we have these values here. And again, if you can, if you want to see the cross-sectional velocity or in the discharge, you can even draw a cross-section using that one right and if i just uh, click on that map output map and if i turn off this one on a structured mesh grid right these are the variables so there is nothing and it is showing which one you want to see so at first let me show you the water level right Th this one 2d water level here it is, and then it's showing here, see the time step. While assigning that map output value, I assigned three hours. That's why it is showing three hour time interval because it is for one month, and that's why it's showing, uh, see, a large number of points. So it will kill your uh, storage. Uh, that's why you need to specify a reasonable time step for map output. And uh, then if I, if I just, uh, hit this button, play button, it will play the storm search. See, it's running, it is showing the animation for its time and stuff. And see, when the storm will come at around, yeah, August 30 or 29, because we know the landfall, see, now the surge is increasing, color is changing, right? I can see the legend here. See, now the storm is coming. And then see, this is the storm is hitting, see? It is flooding everywhere. 
since we don't have the uh, greed of a stream so it is not going further uh, then it is just repeating the process and what else if I want to see uh, that velocity right I'm just turning this off and I'm clicking here velocity ucx means x component of the velocity and the y component of the velocity you can see that but you can't even see the uh, vector right in order to do that you have to uh, open that property of this one then here it is it is hidden there if you click there and uh, it is going to show you this one okay the message we have so that's that so it should be false it's okay and then you can yeah if it is true then you can't even change this value so vector scale so if i want to yeah i want to select uh, input that value as 1500 and uh, then the thickness should be one then you can clearly see the vector i guess see if i zoom in a little bit then you can see the velocity vector right so this is basically based on that one so that is the velocity vector you can see which way the flow is happening and uh, then since it is a storm surge sometimes you can see the vortex or it is right it is flooding because we have this feature we have these lakes and uh, water bodies here and it is just showing repeatedly so we can't yeah we can even uh, extract this animation right using any uh, screen cost uh, software package but there is no way to uh, generate animation using this uh, graphic user interface so that's the demerit we need to use another tool or we can uh, do the same thing using our uh, python code right i have written a code that can uh, do that so here it is and yeah the same thing is happening and at the same time you can even uh, see other variables as well we have the pressure right since it is a storm surge so this is the pressure since it is a uniform pressure for this one we can't even uh, see the eye here and if you want to see the velocity of air we can see that and you have the flow rate everything is there so other than doing that what i'm going to show you now how to see the time series right so if you want to validate your model or calibrate your model and for example if you have here your observation location so you have to be able to specify that location and you have to put this observation point here because that is the observation means in this model software modeling software it's the simulation point so you have to extract this value and you have to compare this value with your observation point and then if you see these are uh, properly matching that means your model performance is better right so how can you do that so if i change the cursor from that hand to this one and then see if i double click there it will open that time series it will ask you to or other than double clicking if you right click if you just select that one uh, then right click a query time series uh, then it is asking which variable you want to see water level depth and other atmospheric pressure or shear stress anything so water level it will show the time series water level see it is showing because this peak is basically the storm hitting and then we have a very huge flood and other than this one before and after that peak we have right regular tidal signal so that's that and how can you do that see here export csv if you export it then we will have that time series and we have time and then the value in terms of meter so you can easily compare with your observation point if you have at that location but the main difficulty is that how can we specify this location if you have if you know the coordinate of your observation point so you have to you have to be able to now put this point here but there is no option here right other than just eyeball method you can see uh, yeah and you can just put it but it is not specific it it won't be specific so that's the problem you can't uh, do that see it is showing here and you have to be able to specify the point and i'll show you once uh, this is done and then for this point if i select it right click query time series and water level 
is showing that value what all level. So it is increasing. Previously it was 2.8, now it's 2.9. The uh, peak is increasing. And other than doing that, I can even show you the depth, right? Water depth at the point, it is 12.6 from the top of the uh, water surface to the bottom of the uh, vasometry or the channel. It is 12.6, uh, uh, usually like uh, 36 to four, uh, 40 feet. Right, and see, this is this is the cross section. And if I click, and the same way, I can uh, select that one. I can select that one. It's selected, right? This selected. And then after right click, and then query time series for this one. You can see the cross sectional velocity, cross sectional discharge, and then cross sectional area. So that's the flow rate because, see, during the storm. We, we have this huge amount of flows coming in and then next time it's coming out because it is a tidal signal. Flow will occur both way, right? So that's where it's positive and negative you can see. So this is how we can view the time series and extract and if you want to uh, view this map and if you want to save that, just use this one export as image click here and then it is asking to use, yeah, you can uh, specify the name and then save as PNG file. Uh, this is how we can do that, but I'm not satisfied with this uh, graphic user interface. And other than using this one, we can use quick plot. Quick plot is another uh, good tool to use to analyze this uh, data. And okay, I'll start talking about this observation point. So I've written a code that will generate that observation point. So if you have like 500 observation point within your study area and if you have to specify that exact location, right, within the domain of your model. So how can you do that? You have to read the latitude, longitude and you have to zoom in but still you can't even specify, right, the decimal degrees. You can't specify accurately the decimal degrees. So your simulation point will be different than this one. So for example here, I'm putting the simulation point here, but if your observation point is here, or if you just uh, specify your simulation point here, and your observation is here, then it won't be the same, because it is in different uh, cell, and uh, see it is the lake, but that is the land, so that's why you have different uh, time series, and the model performance won't be accurately judged, right? So that's why you have to be able to use a code that will automatically assign that value or the point and you can easily import that one. So that's that. We can see and we can view the animation, we can export the time series, we can even export the image, everything we can do. And other than using this one, we can use quick plot to view the same results. So let me just uh, show you where I have that, right? I saved this model over there uh, hopefully it should be uh, here. Let me just uh, quickly show the directory where we have that model. It should be here. Project. I saved it as project. So that one, inside this one you'll see input. That means you have the input files. And then the output means you have the output files. Here, the diagnostic file is already, right? And then this his dot nc, this is a NetStudio file that stores only the time series where you have the observation point. So I have written a code in Python that can extract that time series from this file. We'll use that, okay? When we'll have the complete model, we can use that code and I'll show you how to do that. And then map dot nc, that's the map file and you can see it is huge. It is a 34 gigabyte for this <laughs> small part of the model, it's already 34 gigabyte. Can you imagine that? So now if you know this name of the file, so which file is to open, and then we can open a quick plot and you have to specify this directory that would uh, solve the problem. Okay, I'm starting from the beginning. If you open the previous version of the Del3D model and then if you just uh, select working directory and if you specify that directory and then if you just uh, return and utility and then quick plot. So it is opening the quick plot. Once it's done, if you click 
to open the file then it will directly direct to this directory that's why I specified that select working directory maybe this time it may not be working yet it's worked open and then you will see this file it is showing this one but you have to select that NHCDF NC file so it will show you only that two files see flow under flow fm underscore his and that file 24.322 kilobyte means 24 megabyte and this is uh, 34 gigabyte so i'm gonna show you the history file similarly we can extract the time series from this one as well okay and uh, then i think it's uh this one you have to close that one and here you can see all the variables right all these variables here so for extracting water level you can select water level and you will see the list it is showing the time steps because i just uh, set the time step at five minute that's why see we have 8929 time steps for one month and you can see the name of the observation point is one two three and that is another problem if you use that a graphic user interface to assign your observation point it will give you only the observation point name as one two three four but uh, if you have any specific name of the station uh, that's what we have for our real world case so you have to be able to specify that name so that you can easily identify otherwise it's time you can't even imagine or you can't even consider right that okay this is my uh, location for uh, this area so that's the another the difficulty using that graphic user interface that's why if you customize your code and you can write everything by yourself then that would solve the problem so let me show you i'm selecting the first one and then uh, here it is showing the water level time series right you can even export and then if you click here quick view and uh, then it is showing that one okay and the other usefulness of this one if i just move to next point and then if I change the color here it is asking to change the color as red and then if I want to compare these two add to the plot I'm adding see it is showing the difference a little bit difference is there but what next if I want to select the point number eight and then if I choose the different color as which one purple okay or pink or purple like okay, pink and uh, then I think pink is not not to make a difference we can select a green or this one okay uh, let me just or this one would be okay quick add to the plot I can see the difference okay this is how we can even compare because that two point point one and point two these are located close to each other and then this point is located at a distant location okay that's the reason we have this one so this is how we can even compare the between two points and we can extract if we select here time series right if you can you can even export as matlab format if you have any code in matlab or i think a csv is enough to extract export data and it will generate that i'm gonna just uh, quickly show you that one that is another problem see i'm extracting the time series for point number eight and it is giving me water level point only it won't give you anything the name that is another problem if i select this one it will give you the same name see even you can quickly export this way so that's why a written a code is effective so that i can extract i can assign the name while assigning that observation point before running the model and then if I extract I'll extract the same way give me the time series based on the name uh, let me show you uh, what we have right inside that time series file so here it is we have the date and time and uh, then we have this one even we can uh, plot it here but other than plotting here manually one by one if we have many points that's why I have another code that can compare two time series and plot all together I'll show you how to do that so that's why if once you have the code ready you can you can easily do that so that's the time series you can plot it 
in Excel, if you are not uh, familiar with any programming language, then yeah, you have to do this manual job. But yeah, I'll show you how to do that. You don't have to be worried about this one. So that's the time series using quick plot. But what else we can do, right? What else we can do other than quick plot? So we can even see the map and we can see the animation. So now I'm going to export the other one, map file. So that's the main file. And here we can even see the grid, right? The mesh we have. So that's the mesh and we are running the model for this one. And I'm going to change that color to blue. Okay, and uh, then you can see, you can see all these spatial variables. You can see all this uh, atmospheric pressure, velocity, everything, velocity of air and water velocity. And that is this one, the velocity we saw, right? Flow elements, center velocity vector. And if you have to see the magnitude is there, but I'm going to show the velocity vector. And for math, see, we have this time at step 249 because I saved the math for three hour interval. That's why I have that one. If I select all, and then if I select that quick animation, it will show you that one. And I'm going to show you the vector and then a rooted arrow, not rooted one, so center arrow and then it will show everything well, let me show that one so this is the animation it is going to show you for each of the time step right so this is the velocity velocity vector you can see and analyze that yeah if your model is going well or not so by observing the velocity vector you can see if there is any abnormality right in your of asymmetry, then you can easily inspect and you can solve that one. So your velocity will show that. If it is normally occurring, then that means your bathymetry is okay. You assigned the bathymetry accurately. Your interpolation was correct. So you don't need to worry about that one other than changing other model parameter, right? And then if you wanna see that same water level or water depth, the most useful thing about this software package, quick plot, I'm going to show you that one. If we want to see the water depth, and then you can even see that one. That is showing the water depth. You can't even differentiate, right, what is actually happening because we have see at this location we have a 50 meter depth, 50 meter, and then we can clearly see that. The channel but we can't differentiate right for the land areas because the same color band we can see from 0 to 10 meter so what we can do we can specify a condition here specify a condition clipping values non values are usually minus 999 so we can specify that value okay previously it was minus 99 keep that one if we have missing value so it will exclude that one and then you can use that third means square bracket and you can start with zero and then uh, since I used the uh, one millimeter right you yeah, use one millimeter 0 0.00 I think 0 0.01 I so far I can remember and then 2.5 okay not 2.5 Okay, uh, four, okay, or uh, three, whatever it is, three or four, okay. So, what does it mean? I'm assigning the condition here, okay, clip the values that has none value or minus 999, and within this square bracket, so clip that values which is less than zero, and then clip that values. No, clip that value which is greater than 0 and clip that value which is less than 0 0.01 and also clip that values that is greater than 4 meter. So what it will keep? It will keep only those values in between 
0 0.0124 meter, right? It will exclude all these values less than 0 0.01 and greater than 4. And if I just now use quick animate, then it will show you the difference, right? That's that. Now you can clearly see where you have that flooding, right? You can see 3 meter. We have that from mean sea level. That's why I extracted this, uh, that dry point because I assigned that dry point as 0 0.01. So if there is a 0 0.01 depth of water, that means it is dry. The model won't consider that one. So I'm extracting those values, that blue color. And now you can see we, if we have the blue color, it's 0 0.5 meter depth. And if we have the red one, we can clearly see here we have that water level 3.5, right? And from the observation we saw, water level was 2.8, 2.9, somewhere and yeah, in between or here it was uh, 3 meter or 2.8, 2.9, so that's that. So this is how you can even animate, you can save that animation using this one, you can quickly save that. So this software package is, is useful and you can do that for any other variables you like to do. There is no difficulties if you know that condition because that's the most important condition I can give you here. You can learn this one, right? So that's that. You can use graphic user interface, right? The main window using the FM model where you are running the model or you can even use that quick plot. So other than using that quick plot uh, built in right on the previous version of the model. Yeah, I can even open that separately. I'm closing this one. I don't need this one. I'm closing this one and I already have that. Okay, let me quickly show you where I have that. That quick plot. You can separately download that quick plot and you don't have to install the previous version of the model. So uh, let me just uh, show you if it is there, quick plot. Okay, quick plot, it should be here. You can download that and before that you need to install that MATLAB runtime compiler, right? 13, 2013B version and here it is uh, quick plot and then bin, inside that bin, you have to run that one. D3D quick plot exe. If you double click on that, it is opening on the other window right it is going to open that and it's same as this is the updated version you can see 2.33.62 and then you can do the same thing you can go to that directory you can open that file here the map file or history file whatever you want and you can do the same thing so that's the benefit you can take from this uh, software package yeah for visualization or for quickly analyzing this data set or modeling performance you can do that otherwise you can use coding okay so the previous uh, okay, and okay 999 and what next I do 0 and a space 0 0.01 closing the bracket using like uh, this time showing 5 okay what a level uh, then let me quickly show you that animation is in this interface and it is this one. See, when I just increase this, because water level is uh, 5 here, so it's not showing any difference. So that's why you have to check. It's kind of a trial and error method for your specific project. And that's that. So I'm gonna uh, stop here, okay? Uh, then you'll see what it is showing. I'm not sure you saw that one or not. Maybe not because I was showing myself. Maybe I didn't share my screen. Okay, let me just uh, quickly show you that again. If I share my screen and how did I do that? So I'm closing this one. I have that quick plot out of this uh, model. So here it is. I downloaded this one separately. You can go to Deltra's website and you can download that, double click and then here, here, 
we plot and then inside bean uh, d3d qp if you double click it's opening and then it will show you that window so that's what i just uh, demonstrated and then if you click here directly we don't need the previous version of the software in, installed in your system so that's that right so we can uh, this is how i just uh, quickly demonstrated that water level or water depth here and then uh, what i did continuous shade uh, then this one 0 and 0 0.01 and closed it uh, then this one uh, 3 okay I'm quickly animating the same thing you can do you don't need to install the previous version here it is so it's the same thing we can do so th this one is the latest one we have uh, more options we can use that and we can utilize that one since it is free we don't need to take that hassle of uh, compiling and anything you don't need even uh, you don't need to install even that the MATLAB code for running this one because if you install that compiler package it will do the job for you okay so I'm gonna stop here and then yeah I'll, I'll show you how to run this model in a Linux machine and then we'll extract their data from directly from the Linux machine or if you don't need to write this code you can even download the output files from the Linux machine and you can use that quick plot most of the people they use that one but I don't like to do that because if you want to uh, do the same job repeatedly you uh, need to do the uh, code right you need to write the code so that you can uh, repeat or you can reproduce everything otherwise you have to click every time and if you have more than 100,000 file or 100 file 1000 file how can you deal with that one so your code will do that so I'll show you how to do that while running the model in Linux. I think uh, next tutorial I'll, I'm going to uh, make based on the model that should be run in a Linux cluster. Okay, I'll, I'll check that and thank you for watching this video. And if you have any comment or query or if you face any difficulty, you can uh, let me know. I'll uh, try to answer the que question you have and I'll have you to learn new thing if you have any error then you can learn new thing without having any error and solving the problem if you just uh, run the model and if it is smooth and next time definitely you will have problem and next time if you have any problem you won't be able to solve that that's why we have to learn how to deal with the uh, software package with error masses right okay so thank you again